Hi everybody, my name is Garth Harwood and I'm the Director of Education here at Hidden Villa. We all know that people can change the landscape in all kinds of ways. We build roads, we build houses, we even build towns and cities that change the landscape. But other animals do it too, both large and small animals. Today we're going to look at an example of how a deer can change a tree and even the whole forest. This is one of my favorite trees here at Hidden Villa. This is called a holly cherry tree. It's not a very big tree, but it's an important tree. This little tree here might be more than a hundred years old. It produces so many seeds that if every seed sprouted, we could have a thousand more wild cherry trees, these holly cherry trees, every year. But that never happens. Hungry deer stand under this tree every fall when the little fruits and seeds, which are only this big, just tiny things like this. When these fall down, they eat them like they're candy and they get virtually every one. I had to work pretty hard to find these two that they missed. So, as you can see, there are not sprouts. There are not young trees, just the same as the apparent tree growing under this tree. In fact, the deer eat so many of the holly cherries that there are very few holly cherry trees here at Hidden Villa, and it's all because of the hungry deer. But a few do survive. A few get away and survive to sprout, and so we always have some. This tree itself has been shaped by the deer. If you look at this tree, you can see lots of green leaves up high. You can see the green leaves through the middle. You can see the green leaves down at the bottom of the branches. But between those last branches and the ground, there's not a single green leaf. That's because the deer think they are delicious too. How tall is a deer? Just about as tall as the space between the ground and the first leaves it can't reach. If you were to look closely, at these leaves, you would see that even each leaf has an interesting shape to it. It has little spikes all around the edges of the leaf. If you were to make your hand into the shape of a deer's mouth and clamp your hand around those leaves gently like this and pretend you're a deer's mouth chewing on them, you would probably feel why these are a pretty good defense against deer eating these leaves. However, when the leaves first sprout out in the spring, when they're brand new, they're very tender and soft. And that's when the deer munch on the ones they can reach. So that's an example of how deer can affect a single tree, but because they do the same thing to every tree in the forest that they like, they affect the whole forest as well. Thanks for listening, folks. Mm -hmm.